Hey, what's up everyone? It's Beefcake Lynch, just play some game. All right, going through kind of a beginner's guide to Death Stranding and um, what the game's all about. It's released on Steam. Um, actually taking you from a point that um, played a little bit of the game, kind of went through a lot of the tutorials, um, the beginning of the game, and we kind of have our man here sleeping. I'm gonna wake him up real quick. Massage my shoulders. As you can see, we got Norman Reedus, and I got the shades on. We're gonna make him stand up. So essentially, Let's get it moving. this game is, it's, it is a cool game. Um, I have to admit, it's beautifully, beautifully rendered. Um, and yeah, and I'm, I'm playing this um, kind of full maxed out graphics. Um, you know, they say ray tracing and all that stuff's going on. Well, I got everything on I have to say yeah it's everything it's cracked up to be as far as just graphics um, movement of, of Norman Reedus here and all that stuff um, it's really cool and essentially what you do you're in this world where um, there's been some things there's BTs there's a beach um, they're kind of interconnected um, BTs are like some of these bad guys that I didn't even say they're bad guys, they're like ghosts. So you have these like kind of ghost objects in this world that um, kill you like real quick. You can't really see them. You have to kind of scan for them to see them, which I just did a scan right there. So essentially you get dropped into this world. Um, people, it's kind of like, kind of like the pandemic right now. So you have like this world where people don't actually interact with each other. Instead, what they do is they kind of project images of themselves uh, towards people and you're seeing like a hologram image and we'll probably end up I'm gonna I'm on a mission right now I'm actually um, doing what the missions entail as far as delivering stuff to, to people so doing all that jazz we'll probably see one of these holograms but um, you wake up in this world or you're you know kind of transported to this world so to speak when you start the game um, where you're a porter, which means you actually carry all this junk that you see I have strapped to Norman Reedus's back and his sides, his arms, everything. Um, and you're like one of these like vital people that actually physically takes stuff from place to place because even though you may do things with a hologram or um, FaceTime or whatever it is, kind of like Zoom meeting on steroids they have here, um, it's not the same as like sending somebody a package and as you can see like as technologically advanced as this world is with you know the, the stuff he has on and the kind of the facilities and how they tap into natural resources um, they don't have FedEx and stuff so um, and I know there's probably more to the story to say why there's no FedEx and all that stuff but there's not so you have these porters and you're one of them and they're like these highly esteemed people they can walk out amongst all this stuff and kind of deal with them and what you basically end up doing is you pick up cargo and like this guy right here I could probably pick this thing up yep carry on my back and I'm at 82.2 kilograms of the 125 kilogram max um, that I can carry and you basically carry this stuff um, you pick up missions or orders as they say um, kind of look at your cufflinks here and so right now I am right there I'm Sam and I am going here to this wind farm um, you actually um, place um, routes and all that stuff so you can route from Sam um, to there put a thing down um, you have these and you see there's my route um, it is pretty cool in the sense that it kind of lights up um, orange as you see up there for a part that's hard or treacherous carrying all this stuff but essentially you follow this route there are some bad guys mules that do try to um, take your stuff so you do have to fight some people um, they're NPCs um, but the coolest thing about this game is that um, the way you interact with other players so um, if I'm going down this route or whatever um, transporting this cargo and I put let's say that boulders in my way that's right there and I want to put a ladder as you see my my character has the ladder on his tool belt I am carrying a couple other ladders a lot of tools do expand or collapse where you can't really see them on your character they're in those boxes I'm carrying 
but there's ropes, climbing anchors, stuff like that. You can use other people's stuff if they've done this route before. And even on your map, if you use, um, if you scan the area, um, you can see what other people have built and what you can use, what you have available to you to try to get to the solar farm. Yeah, you see my route kind of takes me right over the mountain there. That's pretty hard. It's all red, so I'm going to have to probably use a rope or something or just find an alternate route around. Even here, if, you're, if you look around just at these rocks, you see all these X's and stuff like that. Um, that's from the scan I did, and it's basically showing me that that would be a really hard thing for me to try to walk up and do, and do whatever. And you can see it right there. I, I do have tutorials still on where they kind of pop up. You see it at the bottom right of the screen there. Um, blue, yellow, and red. So blue being kind of the safest. And um, and as I'm moving uh, Sam right now, um, I'm keeping both triggers uh, kind of um, pressed down. And what that does is he actually holds his straps. You see I can let go of the straps, hold just the, the oh, or maybe just the right strap because I have something equipped there. Yep, the right strap, left strap as well. Um, it helps steady him, which is pretty cool. You don't have to hold both of those. Um, he does walk faster if you don't. But, um, wow, this is like really steep. Let me see if there's a different way. But if you don't, you lose balance, and it'll tell you something like, uh-oh, it's raining. Yeah, and there's like some rain stuff, too, that basically, um, yeah, let's see, there's... Share it. There's these little cargo lockers too that you can um, put stuff into for other players to de finish delivering the lost cargo, like what I picked up. Um, you can also pick up their uh, lost cargo they put in there, and you can help deliver it if it's like happens to be on your route, but it was it didn't happen to be on their route, the destination for that cargo. And you basically both get shared likes from doing it, which is kind of weird. It's like you get a, a bunch of likes, so it's kind of like I don't know, it's like a social media thing, but I don't know. It's just. It's kind of strange to me. And anyway, the rain also degrades the cargo you're carrying, like the boxes. So there's ways you can like spray them and like, you know, make them better and all that stuff. Um, I want to go ahead and actually go to this cargo box and um, see if that's an easier route for me to go to this thing versus the way I'm going. But, um, but yeah, it's like you can... The rain messes up your cargo box. You see those right here, this metal's destroyed. That means it's just totally wrecked. I could hit it with some spray and repair it, I guess, and, and pick it up and deliver it and get more likes and you know all that jazz. But um, I don't know. I just I can't really... I'm not understanding like that part of the game as far as delivering this stuff. You think that they're so technologically advanced, even with like the BTs or whatever is killing people, they would just come up with some way other than just sending a dude out to go do it. And, uh, so yeah. But the beginning of the game, I have to warn everyone that you're gonna, if you're trying to get into this game, yeah, footwear. Sandalweed is footwear. Um, but if you're gonna get into the game, um, and you've seen a bunch of, a bunch of commercials or whatever about this game or reviews and you just see how awesome it is um, there are like motorcycles um, trikes thing they call them that you can ride to help out a lot of the stuff um, I'm still pretty early on in the game so I haven't built any of those things yet or, or used anybody else's yet um, but almost like I want to say I played this game for a full freaking day um, you know trying to learn it when it first came out because um, I pre-ordered it um, or pre-downloaded it and I want to say like the first day almost was entirely cutscenes and it was like teaching you the story of what happened um, you basically move Sam you know this guy around like this for five minutes and you'd have like it felt like 30 or 40 minutes of like cutscenes like telling you stuff like basically your mom is the president of like the US but the US is kind of like dead or gone and or something and it, it's it's weird and so like you're like this golden child you got exposed to stuff you also have like this special ability that um, you don't die you um, when you die you actually can make it back to your body and if I die you'll see that because a sign right here somebody put that there escorty another player put that there which tells me there's bad guys up here um, the ghost people um, so we're gonna do a scan real quick because you can scan and kind of see them um, but essentially, yeah, 
um, it's what it's all about. A lot of cutscenes, and in those cutscenes, it's like they kind of cross the line between like the game world and the game, and then like. I don't know, this game storyline and then playing with other players or at least interacting with their stuff and giving them likes because then you also get likes from their likes that you gave them and you get like stamina boost from that which is kind of weird but essentially if your mom thinks Norman Reedus is hot you should probably play this game because yeah, some of the cutscenes like in personal quarters like he's using the bathroom and it, it like gives you like the impression you're gonna see his junk because like he's gonna like urinate and like you're like looking up at him from the toilet perspective, but it cuts away at the last minute. Um, shower scene, which um, yeah, you kind of see his butt and stuff, and I'm just like, oh, awesome. If I had a mom that thought Norman Reedus was hot, like this would be super awesome, but I don't. And I love Norman Reedus, but um, I don't think he has a. I mean. I'm not like Norman Reedus has a hot ass. Norman Reedus is a cool dude. I'd love to ride motorcycles with him. I just, I don't know. It's kind of kind of a thing. So anyway, this is what I was talking about with the post boxes earlier. Um, you can deliver lost cargo. And so um, one of those things I picked up just now at the beginning of this clip was this thing. So I'm going to select it. Um, and then it says don't entrust. Hmm. It's weird. So it won't let me entrust. Oh, there it goes. So basically I'm going to put that in there to take it off my character and let somebody else kind of deliver it and this is what happens you kind of you get likes or potential likes um, for it and yeah see cargo has been entrusted to another player um, see I'm a skilled handler porter grade 32 um, which increases like your stamina how much weight you can carry stuff like that and you don't start out as a skilled handler I forget what you start out as but essentially you kind of rank up like that um, you can share a locker, so you can claim cargo that's been left there. You can donate weapons and equipment to people. And so if anybody else comes to this locker, they can actually claim that stuff and use it if they need it, which is pretty cool. And, of course, you get likes for that stuff. Um, you have a private locker. You can put stuff in a private locker and then access it later when you're on this route, which is pretty cool as well. Um, but where I can see that can come in, like, really, really, really handy, and it gives some likes. This is actually an NPC-built thing. Ben Benjamin Hancock is an NPC. But, um, there's some lost cargo right now. We're going to go ahead and pick that up. And so the whole point of what I'm doing right now is not this particular mission, but there's like a chiral network. You can see this line right here. I'm in the chiral network area, and then I'm out of it. And so basically you kind of use like all these like little floaty things that you may see coming, coming from the map. They're like these little chiral something there's like these crystals and, and stuff that concentrate when there's a lot of that stuff around and essentially it's like it's weird the people in this world like use that that's how they kind of um connect like through that facetime zoom stuff they do and and so basically what you ended up doing for them um on here and zoom out here um i ended up being in this capital not cities where you start out at oh, 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 oh. Right there, and then like, um, this is, yeah, way station west of Capital City, this distribution center. I ended up putting them back on that chiral network, and that was part of what the president was trying to do to basically relink all the cities and buildings and stuff like that to the network to basically rebuild the United States to what it was, or the uh, United States government to what it was. And so what part of your job is, your main mission is helping reconnect the chiral network, and then of course it unlocks t additional things in the game for you. Um, this mission I'm doing right now is delivering a generator to a, a solar farm. Just kind of odd generator to a solar farm. But anyway, that's what we're doing. So those sunglasses I have, have on, if I hold down LB in this case, it brings up like your compass and you kind of, um, yeah you kind of see like what you're heading towards, like kind of like a heads up display. You'll also notice in the bottom left of the, the screen is that there's, you know, kind of the four things, a wrench and all that stuff. So there's a tool belt. You have some, you know, aid, obviously. Um, you also have, um, like, those sunglasses. That's the top thing. And then you have boots. And you can see boots there are getting yellow. So boots are something that wear out. And apparently it's a big deal. And you want to make sure your boots don't wear out when you're doing, like, this, these long, like, hikes like this with all this stuff. 
So as you can see here, I'm losing um, control of him a little bit, like the momentum from the hill um, with him carrying all this weight is kind of affecting him, and it does. It, your controls get really squirrely with this stuff. Um, but back to, like, the Norman Reedus yeah, acting your mom, thinking he's hot and stuff like that. Um, it's weird because, uh, yeah, like, like in one of the cutscenes, not, not even a cutscene, I was taking a shower or something, because that's part of the game you have to, like, go through and show that you know how to shower and all this stupid crap. Um, but essentially, um, like, I had to show that like, yeah, um, I need to take a shower. And in one of those the shower scenes, it was like Norman Reedus' butt. And then in another one of the, the scenes, it was like um, some AMC show that he has, like like Ride or something. He's doing like the motorcycle thing. It was like an advertisement like that was like overlaid on the shower door. And it's like this clear, round shower door. Actually, I'm probably putting it on the screen right now. And I was like, oh, cool, an advertisement for the actor playing Sam's actual show in our world and so i didn't know to take that as cool or just kind of lame um you can see here i'm putting down a, a climbing anchor um this is something about the container spray and these are time fall showers essentially um that's what degrades everything is time fall apparently is what it's called so, so we're gonna go down thing here. Uh-oh. So you saw everything just go slow motion, right? Right. So what that means is Sam, because um, and I forget the name of it, put it in the comments if you, if you know it, um, there's like a special ability or something that he has or some kind of a birth defect that makes him sense these things and he's like a level one or a level two so he can sense them. Other people can like just see them, like when they're moving, because normally you can't even see them. But he can sense them, and so when he goes all kind of slow motion like that, you know there's like those ghost dudes around, and yeah, here it goes. And that little guy comes out. You get that eventually. You don't start out the game with that. And so now that my little guy is sticking out like that and he's kind of flapping, he's not, like, he's, like, just barely flapping. That means that, like, nothing's around. But he'll start flapping real fast in a direction of, like, a thing whenever he sees it. And so you could scan like this. That doesn't, like, aggravate them or anything. But they are. They're kind of scary. And apparently that's what you turn into if you die. Um, and it creates, like, a huge issue. Like, it creates, like, these fields of those things. Um is very bad for people you kind of want to squat down yeah you can see one right there i'll do the scan thing you see them right there next to that tree in front of me it's just a like a shadow person kind of just floating there oh and now's the other thing i was uh, talking about so yeah you saw norman reedus's um his ride you know show or whatever and then there's like monster energy drinks and like they're in your room and it's like legit monster energy drinks like from our world like barcodes and stuff on the cans like they just took a picture of a monster energy and put it in there and like took their sponsorship money and it's like what's in your canteen and so you drink monster energies like i'm drinking a monster energy right now and it refilled my stamina which is right there to the right of my character that blue line monster energy drink that's what you drink and when you go into a uh, a body of water um believe it or not um monster energy is what refills into your canteen like your canteen just takes the water and like makes it into a, a monster energy it's it's the weirdest thing i've ever seen in my life um and what i'm trying to find right now are one change my footwear to these cool boots so we're going to walk and we're going to go real slow we're going to stay um squatted down now if i get oh crap Yeah, you see that? So this guy's flapping a little bit. He's flapping. Yep, see there? Oh, there's two right there. This is where it gets scary. Is, um, I guess not. I mean, oh, crud. You're like Rottler. So what you can do is you can also hold your breath. Which is 
that's what you're supposed to do. And so apparently, when these things are near you, like, um, movement, they can detect really, 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 really easy. Um, and holding your, so being still, crouching, and all that stuff, and holding your breath, believe it or not, um, make a huge difference. So, yeah, I'm not real sure how we're supposed to get through with this, because there's like four of them there. Looks like there's one right here. Yep, right, right. Think you were afraid. Yeah, so there's one right here. See how much this guy, yeah, my guy's flapping so much. So I'm going to hold my breath. Oh crap, they got me! Gotta shake them off! Yeah, get off me! Oh, there it is. Check on BB. And you can sue them. So this baby helps you detect those things as well. That's that little flower thing that's next to me. Um, this On my left shoulder. It's this baby helping to uh, do that. And so you have to like sue them by shaking them. Which is kind of, that's kind of weird. Um, so yeah, shaking the baby, <laughs> soothes the baby, which helps him detect uh, the monsters that are trying to get you. So anyway, um, and when the baby gets stressed out, it starts crying. When it starts crying, it doesn't. It's not as effective at finding the monsters for you, and um, it actually like helps you get detected and stuff. So yeah, I need to go back over and get these things here. Oh, cargo can to ruin power supply. So I'm going to try to get through this, and if I can, great. I can't, uh, I don't know. Ah, uh, they're on me again! Uh-oh, I think they're actually going to get me this time. They're like, they're like, they're like tar or something, it's weird. So essentially, yeah, like all the stuff you build, so like, um... The mailboxes, the watchtowers, stuff like that, you can build it all, but you have to have a, a little unit that you get from where you get the orders and stuff, and it helps you actually build the stuff you need. So I guess I have to go around this way, because that guy's like right there in my path, man. This kind of sucks, bro. Oh, yeah. You eat these little, like, um, yeah, you eat these, like, these little water bear looking things, which is kind of cool, I guess. Gives you like energies. Let me 
me see here. Do I have a... Oh, and then, yeah. Um, and you have these strands, too, for equipment. Um, it's a rope, but it's also like your life. It's got like your blood and the threads. Or, it sounds really weird, but trust me. In like eight hours of cutscenes you're going to watch, when it teaches you all the stuff, the first day you play this game, you'll learn it and it it looks like 550 cord and the red in it is supposed to be like your blood or something. Um, but yeah, it doesn't look like I, it looks like I have a ladder. Is that going to be sufficient? I don't know. Let's try it. Yeah, looks like it. Let's do it. Oh, damn it. They're up here, too? They're like floaty ghosts. Uh oh, I think I may mess this one up. I wonder if they can grab me if I'm on the ladder. <laughs> That'd be kind of... I don't know. Maybe it's cheating. Not going good. Okay, I'm just gonna let him kill me now. Um, uh, I'm good. Look at that. Look how scary that is. It's like it's like people just coming out of the like look at that. That is crazy, yo, they're trying to get me. It's redonkulous. Alright, so let's see y'all. Let's drink some more monster, that'll fix everything. And we'll hold some breath. Okay, the flaps. They've They've lost their intensity. That means we've left the bad guys behind. And it's because we're like right here at the solar farm. And my, my car goes all jacked. Like it's got like a it's got like a spider web or something coming out of it. My cargo got jacked. And so that means that this is not gonna be a good haul for me. But essentially this is the game, at least so far. Um I know there's going to be some other stuff. Um, I don't want to do any spoilers this early into the game's release or, of course, my videos about the game. Um, Yeah, so essentially that is the president's like right hand person, and um, and yeah, there's some some stuff with the storyline as it pertains to the president. The bridges you see there is the Bridges Corporation. That's you know all these buildings. It's basically it's weird. It's like the Bridges is kind of like the United States now, but kind of not. And your name is actually Sam Bridges, you know. So it's it's like I don't know. It's like president. Like your mom's a president, but you're also kind of royalty because your name's Bridges, but then you change your last name because like you couldn't be associated with the family. There's a lot more. I, I got a feeling there's many more hours of cutscenes and stuff like that for me to understand the full extent of the storyline. But um, so far it's kind of confusing. And so far there's just, I mean, it's like watching a movie. I'm not even trying to like over exaggerate. It's, it is like watching a movie. So let's do this. Let's see what happens with my jacked up thing. Delivered the power supply. It did check it off. Wow. 
I'm all dirty and stuff. And those stinking ghosts. With this unit, we should be able to power the distro center via the chiral network. Other places too, if it works. Here's hoping the UCA can put our electricity to good use. Mind if I have a look? Incredible. How'd you get this here? You fly? No, I walk, bro. You know that. That person is all kind of like, like the resolution wasn't all that great. That usually means they're not on that chiral network or it's not re restored all the way. And so when you store it all the way, they're like much more clear. It's like, you know, like Star Wars, like, you know, Princess Leia coming out of, you know, R2-D2 and talking to you like that kind of hologram type of thing. So we'll go ahead and put this on fast auto skip. I got an awesome rating. I don't know how because that really sucked. All right, and yeah, I'm still a skilled handler. All we need now is a connection to the chiral network. Go for it. Yep, and that necklace right there with those things, somehow it does it. I just put it in this thing and it floats. It's, it's a weird thing. Take it back and put it back on. And I got that as part of the main mission when you first start. is a limited resource, and every structure you build consumes it. However, as you increase your connection level, the bandwidth available to you will increase as well. And what he's talking about the chiral bandwidth and connections is that as you do more missions, so let's say at this solar farm, they may give me more orders to deliver or things they need to have delivered to them. It increases your connection with those people, the likes they give you and all that stuff, which means they're willing to give you more of their bandwidth, which means you can create more of those post boxes, the watchtowers, um, stuff like that. Um, so it's weird. It's like basically I just increased their Wi-Fi. Yeah, see, I just, I just did the strands. So these other ones I already did coming from Capital City. Um, so yeah, I got this next strand. We're trying to basically go all the way to the West Coast. Um, so sorry, I just feel like this, this kind of tutorial or kind of just introduction to the game is kind of all over the place. But there's just a lot of stuff with this game to kind of learn and understand and stuff like that. Yeah, so now I can build generators now. So the little PCC thing I was talking about, it's like basically like a little card or something that you have to have. And if I'm out and about somewhere, like you equip that and you pick what you want to build, either a bridge or tower, uh, the post box to, the, to store things, or in this case, a generator, and you can build it. Yeah, so you have yeah, supply requests, all this stuff. You take on standard orders, deliver requested, and trust cargo. Do all that. Yeah, and seeing it shows you like all the stuff that people have put up, and, and as you see right there, so now that they're on the network, I gave them Wi-Fi and high-speed internet and all that stuff. Now you can see every player that came before you and did this mission and had to build stuff, like I put that rope to, to scale the one thing, the ladder in one part, like if all that stuff was left there, then every other player could see that and use that that comes through here. Now I'm not real sure how that works as far as like millions of people playing this and there's different servers and all that stuff. Um, but I just know that there are, you do come across a lot of stuff people put out. We did our part. Thanks again. You know, I heard the rest of your team was wiped out. Makes what you're doing all the more incredible. You're a one-man expedition. I hope Amelie's doing as well as you. Wonder if she made it to Edgenaut City yet. It was her that put us in charge of the wind farm. I was with the group bringing up the rear while Amelie led the way. I never met her in person. But it was an honor to travel with her all the same. When you see her, feel free to tell her I said so, huh? Sam, got a moment? I ran an experiment with your blood. This is Guillermo del Toro. I think that's how he says his name. Is that, is that him? Blood in BT territory. The Pan's Labyrinth guy. We observe reduced activity. While this is hardly definitive as we have no other repatriates to whom we can turn for additional testing, it does suggest that the bodily fluids of repatriates to BTs. Mama had the idea of developing a weapon to test this theory. The prototype should be ready soon. And when it is, we'd like you to test it. 
Sam, this is the perfect opportunity. This is a second in command guy. Got the whole region on the Cairo network. All that's left is Port Knot City. Return to Capital Knot City so you can pick up relief supplies for Port Knot. By the time you arrive, we can give you the completed prototype in person. One other thing. It's not very often porters get out to that wind farm. While you're there, you should pick up any outstanding orders. No sense coming all the way back here empty-handed if there's work to be done. Have a look at that delivery terminal. See? And it's kind of the game so far. So yeah, so you, you can um, obviously take on these these orders, but um, and trust cargo for delivery and all that too. Um, hey, great work! That wind farm you've brought into the network is essential for our continued expansion. By way of reward, I've added a little something to your PCC, a generator option. Generators recharge the batteries of all nearby devices. That includes machines, bikes, and other battery-powered vehicles. And this is what you'd need. So to, to use like the trikes and stuff like that is you need to be able to recharge them. And so I have already come across some players that have left their trikes in certain places with the batteries dead. And if you had the ability to build a generator, you could recharge it. And so you would need it to, to do those kind of things. Um, but yeah, the, um, yeah, I hate to say it, but it is kind of, uh, it's excruciating um, a little bit, um, the tutorials and like, yeah, uh, they tell you you have it, and then, like, once you go into the menu, they re-explain what it is. I mean, I guess they're trying to do a really good job at um, at teaching you the game, but it, it is a lot to absorb and, and try to make sense of, I feel like. So we're going to also deliver this lost cargo as well. Um, do that. Let's go ahead and just skip it. Nice, I entrusted it to somebody else. And so let's go ahead and... Congrats, Sam. You're cleared to take on open orders. While they're not as high priority as the ones specifically assigned to you, if you're already heading a certain way and you have room to spare, it couldn't hurt to do a little more, right? Just because they're not mission critical doesn't mean they're not important to someone. So why not do a good deed or two? Yeah, maybe. So anyway, that's the thing. So now I get to take on standard orders. Sam, Holy crap. Double check the order summary. <sighs> yeah. So anyway, it's it's a lot. You you end up having a lot of if you have a tutorial on. Obviously, you have a lot of input on stuff, and then the cutscenes are just unreal. So for now, um, I'm gonna kind of leave the game right there. Um, the first things you'll end up building are things like this, like a sign, um, giving likes to people. So far, Death Stranding, um, very beautiful game, rendered very, very well. Um, all the characters, the NPCs, also rendered very, very well. You can tell they're real actors. I will say that um, Norman Reedus has been rendered probably the best. Um, there's certain cutscenes that it's almost like um, they're self-promoting. I don't know. I don't know. It, it didn't piss me off, but it was kind of weird where I'm just like, dude, like I get it, Norman Reedus, you can, I can see every pore in his nose. Awesome. Um, but you do have a lot of like, uh, like close-ups of his face like that, um, where you see in all those details, a little sweat or a tear coming down his eye, and you can see the glisten, you know, the, the, the trail, the tear went down his face, and you can see the wet spots and everything and, and all that. No moms that think Norman Reedus is hot, you don't have his ass rendered like that where you can see everything. Um, is actually hidden as you saw in the video earlier. So please, or I, I have not uncovered where Norman Reedus's naked body is, is is rendered in any certain way. So please tell your mom not to play this game. But um, but yeah, it's a um, beautiful game, uh, a pretty immersive universe. Um, it does seem like it can get repetitive. I know that you can have trikes and all these other things, but just delivering this stuff and being like the real life person versus the FaceTime person or the Zoom person that how they normally interact is kind of whatever. Um, it seems like this stuff has happened a long time ago because they have, they're like really adjusted to this world, but yet you heard the guy, he's like, we can't live like this forever. And you know, we have to try to take back the, the world or whatever. And so I'm like, okay, so how long ago has this happened? Cause we're also like just 
understanding stuff about like people's blood and my abilities and and all that junk um so anyway that's death stranding so far and i played some more of the game um you know something that I'm missing with this game that I could be doing that could uh, maybe speed up the progress a little bit better? Um, hey, hit me with a comment, message me directly, whatever. Um, if there's things in this game that um, where it makes it easier to collaborate with people other than just randomly coming across their signs and stuff like that, uh, let me know as well. Um, like I said, I'm still exploring this game and it seems like a lot of game to explore. So um, until my next video on Death Stranding, um, Beefcake Lynch, I'm out.